So modulation, that's the fancy word for multiplication and division. So modulation. Again, I like to, well, well, look, it's one technique. When it comes to polynomials, we've seen lots of different techniques for drawing them. So that's great if you've got x plus 1 times x plus 2 or something like that. Well, that's a polynomial. Uh, but sometimes we'll have things that are not uh, polynomials multiplied together. You might have e to the x times sine x or something like that. So in that case, I still like to do it by drawing the two construction curves. Right. And then the key things you're looking for with these multiplication and division curves, and in fact, pretty much for every type of curve from here on in, um, when is y equal to 1 and when is y equal to 0? Or a negative 1, for that matter. And the reason for that is, when we're talking about multiplication or division, multiply by 1, it's going to stay at the same y value. Divide by 1, it'll stay at the same value. Multiply by 0... It's going to be an x-intercept. So these are some key y-values you want to look for on the curves. Now, keep in mind, again, discontinuity, same sort of thing. Exclusions in the domain of one of the original functions, they will remain. Can't all of a sudden magically exist. X-intercept, well, that's what I was just saying. If one of the y-values is zero, we know that's going to create an x-intercept. Symmetry. Now, when we're multiplying, it'll retain some form of symmetry. Because remember, we've seen this. Odd times odd isn't even, and so on and so on. So we know that if we're dealing with odd and even functions, there'll still be some sort of symmetry when we multiply them together. Now, here's a polynomial one. So yes, I could have done it the way we've done it before, but I'm going to do it via this idea of, hey, let's put the three construction graphs down. So we've got x squared, which is obviously the parabola, x plus 1, the straight line, x minus 1 cubed, the cubic. Now, what I'm interested in is x-intercepts, because that's where it's going to change from positive to negative. They're not asymptotes I'm drawing in, by the way. That's just marking on the diagram for me where it's going to change from positive to negative. <coughs> so in other words, they're the x-intercepts. Because then I can sort of identify the region that the curve is in. So I can look at all three and go, well, hang on, the red curve's got a, a y-value that's positive. The blue curve's got a y-value that's negative. The... Uh, purple curve's got a y value that's negative. Well, a negative times a negative times a positive would give me a positive. So I know I'm there somewhere. And so in between each of these green dotted lines that I've just drawn in, I ask the same question. So the next one goes positive times positive times negative. So I know I'm down there. Positive times positive times negative. So I'm still down there. So that seems to imply there'll be a turning point at there. And then we've got positive times positive times positive, like so. So I now know the areas that, that I'm in. The x-intercepts I'll just dot in, so there's my, put a little green dot in there. And from there, although the scale I've done, it looks like that's a straight line there, but trust me, it's not. It's, uh, it's just that the y value is very, very small. You can't see it come down and turn back up. You can't... Uh, I oh, know. I should have picked a better scale, shouldn't I? It's another way of drawing, I guess, polynomial graphs. Personally, I prefer our other method for polynomials. I think that it's, it's easier. Um, let's do a division one. Still do it the same way. Okay. This time I've got four straight lines. The difference now is, with the ones on the bottom, they'll become vertical asymptotes. So mark those in, Whoop. there we go. I've made those red, red, no, can't go there. Whereas the other ones were green, yes, you can go there. Okay, now let's have a look at our regions. So for some reason I changed it to blue, I don't know why. Blue, yes, you can go there. Okay, negative times negative times negative times negative is positive. Positive times positive times negative times negative is negative. Positive times positive times negative times negative is positive. Positive times positive times positive times negative is negative. And positive times positive times positive times positive is positive. So we now have our regions. We have some asymptotes. We have some x-intercepts. 
We know the curve's got to travel through the x-intercept, it's got to bend towards the asymptote, it's got to be in these particular regions, so... Oh! I've worked out the y-intercept because that was an easy one to work out for this one, so I plotted that one in. Okay, yes, investigate the behaviour, so that idea of dominance, when we've got things multiplied together. Now in this case, which one's going to dominate? They're all linear functions. So it's just going to have a nice usual one. But if I do a polynomial division though, I find out that I've got a horizontal asymptote, you'll notice. So we have got a horizontal asymptote at one. There's where the curve, the blue curve comes in. So it's got to bend towards the asymptotes. It's got to be in those regions. Now it couldn't go below that horizontal asymptote here because in that case it would need another x-intercept because it can't cut the asymptote. So it's sort of trapped, and that's how I know, okay, it's going to be a hyperbola like that. Let's do one which doesn't, it's not a polynomial. So sine x on x, right? There's y equals x. There's y equals sine x. Remember, the limit of sine x on x is 1. So this is interesting. Because I know, at bottom of the fraction, x can't equal 0. It's not a vertical asymptote though, it's a point discontinuity. Because we know it is 1 is the limit. So it's going to be approaching 1. So I'll just put that point discontinuity there. <coughs> um, I'm going to have x-intercepts regularly spotted. And what we end up with is a curve. And if you think about it logically, what are we doing? We're getting our sine curve which is always going in between minus one and one, but we're dividing it by bigger and bigger and bigger numbers. So as it's winding along the x-axis, it's getting smaller and smaller. So it winds along, but the point discontinuity at one is, I guess what, a lot of people sort of go, hang on, what's going on here? They somehow try and put an asymptote in and it doesn't have one. Let's have a go at a handful of multiplication and divisions as well.